Hi, I'm Carl, and welcome to my talk, recorded for the 24 Days of Embraco 2021. So, in this video, I'm going to be looking at microarchitectures um, and hosting Embraco on a container based application compared to um, uh, the tradi tr traditional monolithic application that we've used to host websites before. It's the first of two parts. This is the first. Uh, this is me, I'm Carl. Um, you can find me online mostly on Twitter, uh, but I also have a blog which I update every time I remember to, not as often as I'd like. So what are we talking about today? Um, today we're going to be looking at the concepts of containerized applications uh, versus monolithic applications that we've traditionally built. We're going to look at what Docker is, how Docker works. We're going to take into account some of the things you need to know about Docker, storage, networking, um, how you work with databases, how you work with services, that kind of thing. So what is Docker? Well, um, Docker is a set of platform as a service products that use OS level virtualization to deliver software in packages called containers. Uh, that's from the Wikipedia um, page on Docker. Uh, the containers are isolated from one another. They bundle their own software, libraries, and configuration files and can communicate with each other through well-defined channels. And that pretty much describes it pretty well. Um, one way to think about them, little virtual machines. It's not entirely correct. It's close enough. Uh, so let's look at what the difference is between a traditional virtual machine setup versus Docker is. In a virtual machine setup, you would have your main operating, your, your main computer, your, your kind of host, uh, which has the, um, the hypervisor on there, which effectively virtualizes the hardware and then lets you create multiple virtual machines off that hardware. So you might have one virtual machine for your website, uh, one virtual machine for your database, and maybe a second website, which could be a load balance between the two or maybe that's a, a, an image cache service or a search service or an API, something else. Um, Docker works slightly differently. On a traditional virtual machine environment, each VM has to have its own operating system. Uh, that isn't there in Docker. Each application effectively uses the Docker infrastructure to to, to use the, the, the operating system of the host machine. So it doesn't need to replicate that. Now, that has strengths and weaknesses. Um, it does mean that if you're on a Windows machine, you can, through the use of the Windows subsystem for Linux, host both Windows and Linux Docker containers. But you can't host a Windows container on a Linux operating system, uh, host operating system, because Linux doesn't have access, doesn't doesn't have that that kind of those Windows uh, API calls. They're natively available to it. You can only host Linux containers on Linux. So, um, what is a monolithic architecture? I mean, it's a traditional architecture that we've used for uh, many many years to build large websites or small websites. You know, you have your user interface, the back end, the API maybe a business logic level, maybe not, a database below that. Uh, it's traditionally normally deployed all at once. You have a big bang release every time you make some changes. So every time I add a new feature, add a new service, I have to deploy everything in one big go. Not necessarily always, but um, yeah. Uh, the code base can get fairly complex for large applications. It's not unusual to have dozens and dozens of projects in an application. It can be harder to test. Um, specifically around things like regression, yeah, unit integration testing is a big one, um, snapshot testing, you, 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 you know, uh, because of the complexity of setting it up, because of the complexity of setting up staging environments and things like that, it can be harder to test these monolithic applications. And they can be resistant to big changes um, because it's all, again, one big thing. Scale is a problem. Um, if I need to add extra resources, I can either scale upwards if I'm on a virtual environment, but not if I'm on a physical environment. If, if my servers are, are dedicated servers, I can't scale them up so easily. Um, 
to scale outwards to basically create a second machine that's an extra level of cost but then you also have to take into account things like load balancers which is extra hardware you have to put into place um, and there can be barriers to new technology um, if I want to do something differently um, I can do that as long as my operating system and the technology that I'm using is compatible with that but maybe that's not the case but the big caveat here is there's nothing wrong with a monolithic application to host your websites as I've been I have plenty of hosts myself um, currently on the same application architecture and it works absolutely fine containers are just a different way of looking at things so with a container you traditionally will have um, your application um, and then any networking containers and and storage required to go with that but your application is broken up into individual pieces so you might have one piece for your website one piece for your database uh, one container for uh, your search um, API one container for a Redis cache maybe uh, you know you, you break your applicate your website up into individual pieces um, the key here is that each piece can be independently deployable they're not you don't have to deploy everything in once you can make changes to one part of it and deploy just that um, that works again really well with the single responsibility principle um, your 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 individual pieces are also fairly loosely coupled you know for for, for example maybe i have a, a service that i use which sends emails through for example uh, sendgrid and i want to change that to use uh, mailchimp i can just replace that container uh, without having to redeploy everything else the website the you know any, anything that's associated with that and just change that one container which does the email sending uh, and that's it it's done and I can test that independently. I don't have to test the entire website. I don't care about the rest of the website because all I'm doing is just one, one job. I'm just 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 building an email sending service. Um, not restricted to the same text tag. This is really really cool because it means that um, you, you're not. Uh, you know, I, I can build my website in C Sharp, but I can still use APIs that are built in in Go, and I can use um, services that are built in F Sharp. I can, I, I, you know, I can use whatever um, tools that are available to me, and whatever tools my te my my team are my my team are comfortable with. Um, uh, it's repeatable in the sense that um, if I do something and build it in in my my dev environment locally. If I take that container image and I deploy that to the staging environment or the production environment, it's going to be exactly the same because it's exactly the same code running in each piece. And because each each um, each container is a small piece, the code base associated with that container is is appropriately smaller. Um, I only have to consider the API for my send for, for my email sending in the earlier example I don't care about the rest of the website and if I'm working on the email sending I don't have to have a project open with all the entire website there I just have to have code for my email sending and any tests associated with it that does add more complexity and that's where the asterisks come into it so you know it's not um, it's not a better solution it's just different with different strengths and different weaknesses there's a few Docker concepts that are useful uh, for the audience over here at this point. Um, a Docker image, uh, which is effectively a read-only template for creating a container instance. It is the definition of what goes into your container. Uh, a Docker file is effectively a set of instructions that are needed to build that container image. So your website um, and all the code that's associated with it will also include a file which is a Docker file. Uh, which includes instructions on how to build that container image from there and we'll look at one later as an example includes all your settings parameters instructions keys URLs that kind of stuff um, and docker compose is effectively used to create related images which which work together to make your application so whereas a docker file is is responsible for a single image docker compose is responsible is responsible for your entire application um, it uses a CLI tool uh, to manage your application both locally and also in CI CD pipelines in, in production environments. Um, this is one thing you'll, you'll may see old documentation re which re refers to Docker Dash Compose, but um, that's now been changed to Docker Space Compose. So 
they're interchangeable. The new way of doing things was is with Docker Space Compose, uh, and it uses everyone's favorite data structure, YAML. So the demo um, today, I'm going to be creating a very simple container application architecture, which is based on three websites, uh, predominantly an Embraco website. Um, which will host our application. There'll be an API associated with it, which is going to be uh, just a weather API uh, and a SQL Server container, which runs that application. So let's go look at that demo. So to get this demo up and running, um, you're going to go to this URL up here, um, uh, GitHub slash Carsagna slash Embraco dash Docker, uh, clone the repo. Uh, it's got the basic notes, um, including things you'll need. Uh, specifically, you're going to need Docker Desktop for Windows. If you're running on Windows, there is also a Mac version. If you're running on Mac, um, on Windows, you're going to need WSL for Windows, but that's installed as part of Docker. Uh, and I find VS Code to be one of the most helpful uh, UIs in working with this. So I'm just going to clone that repo here in a fresh folder. Um, whilst that's running, I'm also going to fire up Docker Desktop. So you can see that I don't have any containers related to this project. The containers that's there is just my internal dev SQL server. So I'm going to open up this project in code. And you'll see um, there's uh, the structure inside here is the kind of the main readme, which is the same on the website. Um, uh, and I've got a solution file which kind of has the solution for the entire project and everything's kind of kicked off from this main docker yaml file um, this this docker yaml file effectively um, manages uh, the deployment of all three containers inside this application uh, if you recall um, this demo is going to be uh, an API which is used by the website the main Embraco website itself and SQL server all within the same kind of network. So uh, this same three pieces are represented here. You've got your database, um, which has its own Docker file, which is inside data Docker file there to install that. Uh, you've got the main Embraco website itself, which is inside its own Docker file uh, inside here. And these Docker files are what are used to actually create the containers and the images for the containers themselves. Um, and you've got the uh, the weather API, uh, which is got again its own its own Docker file inside here. Uh, so yeah, the Docker Compose file manages the entire application and sets all three containers up. It sets um, the ports that they listen on. It sets the networks that they are. It sets the name of the actual container themselves. Um, uh, it also sets uh, volumes. Now these are really important, particularly in the case of the database, um, because once a container shuts down, any files internal to that container are destroyed. But if you want to maintain your database files whilst you restart your container, or if you have to recover from a crash or something like that, by storing the volume, uh, the database files in a the volume, they're still available once a container restarts. So to fire this up, uh, I'm going to open up a terminal, uh, and I'm going to where is that new terminal there? Uh, I'm going to run from the command docker compose up minus d. <clears throat> what that's going to do is that's going to run through the three installation docker files there, uh, that one for the database, this one for the website, and this one for the API container. Uh, and you can see it's actually already done that really quickly. Um, so I can now go and see that from inside here, I've got this new application that's up and running. It contains the, my three containers. Uh, the API is listening on port 5081, SQL Server is listening on port 14, 1433, and the website is on 5080. So if I fire up uh, Firefox, I should be able to go and look at the weather forecast API. This is just to see kind of what the weather forecast is doing. Um, to demonstrate this weather forecast API call, uh, what I've basically done is inside the Embraco website, um, I've first of all used Paul Seal's um, 
uh, template. Uh, what, what was it called? It was, I should know this, sorry Paul. Uh, it was called the portfolio package, yeah, which is the portfolio sample website. Um, I've got I've got some instructions on how to recreate this repository from from scratch yourself if you don't want to just clone mine and use it. Uh, so yeah, I've I've taken Paul's uh, portfolio package and I've just extended the home page controller to call my API um, and just in the temp data response uh, as a quick and dirty demonstration send the response back and all this will do is will take these responses serialize them. Um, deserialize them into an object and send them back into the view and all the view will do is take that data and just render it out on the page so uh, let's go and see if that is up and running okay so this is the portfolio website it's a standard and bracket website i can kind of browse around all parts of it um, I can see home page and down here you'll see the weather API response now this response is from um, my website application container calling into this container and then that returned the response over there to to give a very quick example of how this is super useful say I want to change that weather service maybe it's using I don't know BBC weather to get its weather data and you want to change it to call some other weather service all I have to do is change the code for that container uh, which in this project is all in one solution because it's a quick sample but this could very easily be in a completely isolated container itself um, and then redeploy that and then I'm just effectively swapped one container out for another service um, in the same way, you've got access to full Embraco, so I can go to Embraco, uh, log in with the credentials. Those are all uh, on the README page, and yeah, you can see it's just a fairly standard Embraco site, but it is all running from these three containers. Um, uh, I can also open up these containers, and I'll see the logs that are being fired off from here, and yeah, there's a few. There's a few errors and things to deal with, but again, this is a sample, but you can kind of see what's happening. Um, and I can demonstrate it all by killing these containers, and then once they're dead, all these sites will stop. They'll just keep spinning in timeout. They will no longer respond. There you go. Cool. So that was a demo. So to recap what we just looked at, um, we looked at what a container is uh, and how that compares to a traditional virtual machine. We discussed some of the benefits of containers, how they're independently deployable, testable, uh, reusable, um, all that stuff. Um, we ran Embraco in a container as part of a larger application. Now the code for this is available online. Um, it's at that URL. So I'll also send links out to this on Twitter later, etc. Uh, do take a look and I welcome any feedback on that. Um, I'm not a Docker expert. I'm learning just as the audience is too. Um, so yeah, um, have a look. Uh, and obviously I'll caveat that this is, you know, not a production setup. I've done this as a learning exercise. So, you know, any advice inside here is just for that. Um, Docker is and containers are a huge topic and there's a lot to learn over there and yeah just keep an eye on my blog I'm going to continue to create more and more articles and videos around this so come and say hello um, what's in part two well um, you're just gonna have to come back and have a look so it's, uh, it's gonna be exciting thank you very much and I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season and see you all soon.